Hi everybody, in this video we're going to take a quick look at the code for the Instagram example in Vulkan. So first of all, uh, let's take a look at the features we have here. And as you can see, this is a list of pictures uh, in a grid, uh, a bit similar to Instagram. And um, as in Instagram, you can also click a photo to get more details. And, uh, you know, you have uh, the name of the author of the photo, their comment, other users' comments. You can, of course, uh, leave one here. And because you're the admin user, you can also edit other users' comments, edit uh, the photo description. Um, and you can, of course, uh, upload uh, a photo yourself. So as you can see, it's pretty simple. Um, if we think about it in terms of uh, collections and schemas, we have two collections, or actually three main collections. So we have, as usual, uh, users. You know, uh, I'm logged in. You also have these other uh, users, which, by the way, just like the, the photos, the comments, the users, uh, these are all uh, dummy documents inserted by a, a small script that runs when you first launch the example. So we have users and we have uh, pictures, uh, pics, that's our second collection. And finally, we have comments. Um, so yeah, the structure, the data structure is relatively simple, but just with these uh, three things, we can already build a lot. So if we go to the code here, the first thing you really need to know is that um, in Vulkan code is organized in packages. So if you take a look at the packages file in your uh, Meteor folder, which by the way is a hidden folder, so you might need to uh, you know, um, enable hidden folders in your uh, system to see it. So yeah, once you look at that folder, you can see we have uh, Vulkan core. This is the, the core package uh, that contains all the code in Vulkan. You have a language package, so this is where you would switch out, uh, you know, English, US with French or, or German or some other uh, language. And this in turn will be used for, you know, uh, all the strings in forms and messages and so on. And you have the accounts packages, which govern uh, the authentication methods available to your users. In our case, we just want to log with passwords, but we could also enable Twitter or Facebook login. And then finally, you have uh, your package. So here we have four examples. Uh, example movies is a really simple example with a single um, collection, movies, just to show you how loading data, paginating data, uh, inserting, editing data works in Vulkan. And then we have uh, example Instagram, the current example we're going to talk about today. And uh, form and customizations are a bit more complex, so I'll leave them for another video. So uh, I've been talking about packages, and these are all here in your packages folder. So you can see there's just a lot of stuff in there, but for now we're only interested in this one, example Instagram. So um, there's a bunch of directories. There's also a package.js file, and this is the package manifest. So this is not an NPM package. This is actually a Meteor package. So uh, in principle, they're very similar, but Meteor packages follow their own structure and their own rules. Um, and so instead of a package.json file, they have this package.js file. So what do we have here? First, we have a name for the package. And then we have this unused block that actually uh, describes what needs to happen when somebody uses the package. So first, we declare a few dependencies. So core, because that's like what all Vulkan packages need to depend on. Then a few features that are used by this package, uh, forms, accounts, and forms upload to enable us to upload pictures. And finally, some third party, so non Vulkan packages, in this case, an SCSS package to parse our uh, style sheet using the SAS format. 
We also add a static asset, in this case, an image, which is the logo. And finally, we declare two uh, modules, which is kind of the entry point into our packages code, one on the server and one on the client. This way we can serve you know, different bundles to both sides. And so, yeah, um, style sheets, that's our style sheet. Static, that's our logo. And then we have these four directories. So server and client are fairly easy. Um, client has one file, which is just uh, points to the location of the index.js file. Main is the same. We also have index.js. We also have seed.js. So this is what I was talking about when I mentioned uh, seeding our database with, with dummy data. And you don't really need to worry too much about this. Um, if you look at this right here, that's that's what it does, right? On startup, if there are no users, it creates a bunch of dummy users. If there are no picks, same with picks and same with comments. Uh, if you want, you can go and, and look at the detail of the code, but you know this is really just for the example. Uh, it's not that relevant to uh, real world usage of Vulkan. So the two directories that have all of our code actually are modules and components. And uh, we'll start off with uh, modules. So remember how I said we had two um, collections, or three if you count users, which is uh, enabled by default. So here they are, comments and picks. If you check the index.js file, um, you can see I'm importing them here picks, comments, and then I do a few other things which um, I'll probably come back later too. We also have routes, and this is kind of the, the most important file in the package in a way because without it, uh, you wouldn't see anything, right? This is where you declare your main route with the uh, just slash path. You can name it, in this case, home, and then you pass it a component to display. In this case, the picks list component. So the component directory is organized in a very similar fashion with also a picks and comments uh, directories and then common for things like the layout and the header. Um, we'll go to components later. First, I want to show you a bit more about how the backend logic is organized. And so since the, the main thing you see when you land here is, uh, is the pics, the pictures, uh, we're going to start with this. So the collection file is uh, kind of the, the main file where we centralize everything, where we declare our collection. And by the way, I've been talking about collections. So a collection in Mongo is just like a, a table in SQL or or you know, just a, a set of documents that all share the same types. So pictures, movies, uh, comments, and so on. These are all collections. And in Vulkan, we take these Mongo collections and we augment them with a few more uh, objects and properties and methods. And so we do this through the create collection uh, utility. And we pass it a collection name um, we pass it a uh, type name. So the collection name is going to be used inside the Mongo database. The type name is going to be used inside the GraphQL schema. So, uh, you know, they're pretty similar. Uh, you can think of the collection name as the plural and the type name as the singular. Then we pass it a schema. So this is not a GraphQL schema, but actually a, a JSON schema which we'll uh, see very soon. And then resolvers and mutations, uh, I'll talk about this a bit later. After that, we add a view. Uh, and this is just uh, in order to set a default way of uh, filtering and sorting results whenever we query that collection. In this case, we want to query, sorry, to sort pictures by their created at field. So we add this default view. So the schema, this is probably the most important part. And um, this is where you define all the fields in your collection. So 
in this case, we have uh, these three like standard properties. So ID uh, used by Mongo to identify a document, to query it, and so on. Created that. This is a, a timestamp uh, that gets automatically filled in whenever you create a new document. And then user ID, which helps us assign a document to a specific user, right? This way we know uh, who took a picture. And then we have a few custom properties, uh, image URL, the URL of the image, uh, body, and finally, comments count. So if you noticed here, uh, we show the count of comments. And we, know, we do this before we have actually loaded uh, these comments, right? So in order to do this, we store the comments count uh, separately in our schema. Now, there are a few uh, fields here that are worth uh, looking at. So type is fairly self-explanatory, I think. Viewable by is pretty interesting. This is what controls who can view a specific field of a specific document. In this case, uh, guests, this is the, um, the user group that corresponds to just uh, random non-logged in users. So if you type uh, localhost uh, 3000 and you're not logged in or anything, you'll be a guest. You'll be considered as a guest. Um, there are other groups, for example, members. It's basically just a logged in user. So if you look at this, it says that anybody can view uh, the image URL field, but you need to be logged in to actually insert it or edit it in the document, which makes sense because otherwise, uh, if you're not logged in, we have no way of knowing if you are the owner of the document, so we can't let you edit it. Uh, what else do we have here? We have the control uh, property which is used to define the form control um, you know, used to display the form field. What I mean by this is when you edit uh, this, for example, we have a text area form control for the body field, but we have this custom uh, upload component for the image URL field. And then if it's a, a comment, we just have a regular text input field here. So that's what we're uh, d doing here. Control uh, forms upload for the custom upload. We have a few options, you know, that um, kind of go with that custom control. Uh, for the body, we only have um, a text area, which is kind of a, a standard, simpler form component. So this JSON schema is used as such to do a lot of things, but it's also used um, to generate the GraphQL schema. And GraphQL is basically the data layer um, that helps Vulkan publish data to the client. Um, but what's really cool is GraphQL is this uh, standard syntax uh, originally made by Facebook. But there's this whole ecosystem of open source tools like uh, Apollo, which Vulkan uses, that basically uh, work with this in a very flexible, powerful, and also um, database independent way. So since we already have this JSON schema, rather than ask you to rewrite a new schema with very similar information, uh, we just generate it for you. And so this is what happens when you pass the schema to create collection. Um, you know, among other things, it will create that GraphQL schema. Now, to, uh, to do this, to wire up your data layer, it needs the schema, but it also needs uh, resolvers. So, a GraphQL resolver is basically uh, uh, this kind of endpoint, right, that can be queried by the client and that returns data. In this case, there are uh, three basic resolvers, one for a list of pictures, one for a single picture, you know, useful when we bring up that detail view, and then PixTotal, um, that's used, um, if I reload this, Right here, it says six out of nine. So this is just this nine number corresponding to the total number of pictures on the server in our database. This is a, a resolver. This is an endpoint that communicates that information to the client. 
So already you can see that uh, GraphQL is pretty flexible because these two resolvers just return um, database documents. And then in this case, an array, in this case, a single object. But this one returns just a number, right? A count. So, um, you know, I'm not just publishing data from the database to the client directly, but I really do have this layer that can manipulate and transform data. And then uh, we have a few other resolvers here on the pick object. So remember how I define this uh, type name property here, uh, pick. And that's basically telling GraphQL, okay, anything that's in the picks collection is of type pick. And then when GraphQL enters, encounters, sorry, um, an object of this type, it can use the resolvers to figure out what to do with its properties. So if it sees a user property on a pick object, it's going to return the picture's author. And if it sees a comments count uh, property, it's going uh, not, it's not going to look in the database for a comments count property. Instead, it's going to calculate the count, you know, by uh, doing a database uh, search, basically. So uh, this is a pretty cool feature because although we've declared a comments count property here, we never need to actually store any count in the database. We can just generate it on the fly whenever we query that specific resolver. And by the way, this is explained in a lot more detail uh, in the Vulkan documentation. So finally, if we go back to our collection file, the last piece of the puzzle is the mutations. And mutations are the, the functions that will help us mutate data. In other words, uh, modify data. So either insert a new document, uh, edit a document, or remove a document. And a mutation um, follows this structure in Vulkan. So it has a name. It has a check function that checks if the current user can perform the mutation. Um, so in this case, who, who can insert a new document? Basically, um, we just check, first of all, if the user is actually logged in. And then if the user can perform the action named picks.new. Um, if we look at, for example, picks edit, it's a bit different. First, we make sure that the user exists, that the document exists. And then we check uh, as well if the user owns the document. So in this case, uh, it's not just, um, you know, can the user perform this action, but also do they own the document. And so that check function, uh, if it passes, we do the actual mutation, we, you know, specify the collection, in this case, picks the document ID, and then some more properties. You can learn more about this in the mutation section of the documentation. But so once we have uh, these three elements, the schema, resolvers, and mutations, we're ready to create our collection. And based on this, we're already building our whole uh, GraphQL backend. So yeah, the, the, that's pretty much the only thing that the server needs to enable uh, this data layer. And then there is one more thing that the client needs, which is the fragments. And fragments are um, bits of GraphQL syntax that define the data that's going to be used, or rather the, the data that you want to get back when you do a GraphQL query, right? So. It's pretty self-explanatory if you just look at it. Um, if we want to display a PIX item, we ask for the ID, created at, user, image, URL, comments, count. In other words, all the information required here, although we don't really need the author, so I might remove this in the future. But then if we want to see the uh, actual uh, detail view, we have a different fragment. So we'll use this fragment to query for data because this one has the body um, field, this one. Now, of course, in this specific example, we could just ask for all the data all the time. 
uh, it's not a big deal to load one more line of text for each each uh, picture. But you can easily imagine how uh, this could have a lot more fields, right? You could have five, ten more properties, and if any of them are pretty big, it makes sense to load that data conditionally with a different fragment. OK, so this is um, everything that we have in the PIX collection. Oh, I did forget one thing, uh, permissions. So earlier, I was talking about how mutations check who can perform what action. Uh, this is where you can um, define who can, you know, who has or hasn't permission to perform these actions. And um, for example, we have the members group. So remember, this is the group of all logged in users. And, and that's about it. No specific distinction. So they can do these three actions. They can create a new picture. They can um, edit their own pictures. And they can remove their own pictures. And now, of course, you saw in the mutation check that we check not only that they can perform the action, but also that they own the document. You need, you, you need both pieces of the puzzle. Um, but on the other hand, admins can perform these two actions, edit all, remove all. And um, here, well, even if a user doesn't own a document, if they can perform the uh, picks edit all action, then we consider um, that they can perform the mutation. So um, when you when we're talking about uh, authorization and uh, who can perform what, there's often this multi-tiered uh, strategy where you check different factors, right? It's not just one thing. Um, but yeah, this time, I think I really did cover everything in the PIX um, directory. And then comments is going to be very similar. So we also have a collection, JS, file. One small difference, um, the form example also has uh, a comments collection. So to avoid conflicts, I'm specifying one extra property so that this collection has a different name inside the database. So as far as GraphQL is concerned, uh, it will still be named comments, but just in the Mongo database only being named comments Instagram. We also have a default view. Uh, this one is a bit different because it, um, it uses the, the terms argument here. So when we are talking about comments, we always want to show the comments for a specific picture, right? And so we'll always be passing a pick ID property in the terms object terms being the object that you use when you to specify uh, query options, in this case, pick ID. Um, and then we use that to make a selector object, which will be used in Mongo to get all the comments that correspond to a specific picture. Um, so the main thing to remember is that when you're creating a new view for a collection, you can specify filtering and sorting, but also um, just uh, the selector. So selecting specific documents or a specific subset of documents in your database. Fragments, uh, we only have one fragment this time. We also have our same three mutations, new, edit, and remove. We have the same permissions, new, edit, own, remove, own, and then edit all, remove all. We have the same three basic resolvers, a uh, list, single total, as well as a user resolver, so we can get the author of a comment. And the schema, we have the same uh, standard properties, ID, created at, user ID, and then body and pick ID. You can see that pick ID is marked as hidden. Why? Because when you create a new comment here, well, we know it's uh, meant to be on this picture, right? So we can prefill the pick ID, and we don't need to show an explicit form field in this form. So for that reason, it's hidden. Up to now, we've talked a lot about the, the back end and the data layer. We haven't really mentioned the front end. So in other words, the React layer 
of the app. So that's what we're going to focus on now. And all React components live in this components directory, which has three subdirectories, comments, common, and picks. And again, let's start with picks. So let me close this. And if we go back to our routes file, uh, you, maybe you remember that our entry point in our app was the picks list component, which is this one right here. Um, so what's going on here? Well, we have a pretty standard uh, React component. I can actually remove this because it's not useful anymore. And um, this is a, what's known as a functional stateless component. In other words, the syntax is just a function that takes arguments and returns a bunch of uh, JSX. So it's pretty simple. There's no state, there's no uh, constructor, there's no class, nothing of that. So what's going on here? Well, first we test if the data is loading. In other words, the, the list of pictures right here. If it is loading, we display a loading component, uh, which we imported from uh, Vulkan Core. So this is kind of a standard uh, component that just comes packaged with Vulkan. Of course, you can replace it with your own loading uh, if you prefer. If it's not loading, we display the content. So we have a, a list content uh, div, we have a list grid div. We then map or iterate over the results uh, property. And then for each pick, we call the picks item component. And then we have this small area here to show the uh, load more component. If you know, if the total count of results on the server is superior to the number of results we are currently displaying. So for example, you know, if, um, if there are nine results on the server, but I'm only showing six, then I show the load more button. And what should that button do when you when you click it, uh, basically trigger the load more function that's passed here as a prop as well. Now you might be wondering where all these props are coming from, right? Results, current user loading, load more, and so on. Well, a very easy way to find out is to use the React Dev Tools, and then go to Picks List, and you can see that it has these um, parent um, components. So with current user, with list, with state, with Apollo, the two that matter are these two: with current user and with list. And these are known as um, higher order components, which are basically components whose uh, sole role is to pass properties down the chain to their children components. In other words, uh, with current user has no HTML, has no divs, has no state, none of that. All it does is take picks list and pass it a prop. As you may have guessed, in this case, the prop is current user. Uh, now, with list is very similar, except it doesn't pass just one prop, it passes uh, a few. So um, I think all these load more, load more ink loading um, uh, results, you know, um, pagination terms, these are all passed by uh, with list. You usually don't need to worry about all of them. The main ones are results, which contain the uh, the data that you want to show, and then maybe uh, loading, which contains uh, a boolean, which says either true or false. It's loading or it's fits down loading. And now finally, how do you actually, um, you know, use these uh, higher order components? Well, it's pretty simple. Uh, you just wrap the component with the higher order component or HOC. So here we are first wrapping with with current user, and then we're wrapping with with list, except with list takes options. So we pass them first, and then we use the resulting um, function returned by this to wrap. The options are first the collection. So where do we want to load data from? Second, the name of the fragment, which we defined all the way back in um, fragments.js here, uh, picks item fragment. 
and then optionally a limit uh, how many documents we want to show at once. And based on these three options, we can query our data layer, retrieve the data, and then pass it on to the component. Now let's keep moving down the chain. Uh, we now have Pix item. Pix item has one interesting feature, which is the modal trigger component. Now, just like the loading component before it, this comes uh, packaged in with Vulkan. And it's a component that lets you define something. And that something can be a text link or it can be another component. And when that something is clicked, it will display a model containing the, the child of the model trigger component. In other words, here, when we click uh, a photo, it will display this uh, Pix detail component. And again, the React Inspector will show us exactly what's going on. Here, Pix detail is the child of with document, model body, model dialog. Um, so you can see that we're displaying Pix detail in the model. And this is what we're doing here. It's a very handy, uh, small uh, component. And uh, yeah, Pix detail. This has a bit more going on. Uh, first of all, we can see it's receiving three props, loading document current user. Uh, it's receiving current user from its parent, but uh, loading and document are received from the with document higher order component. So earlier we had with list for a list of documents. Now we want to show a single document. We have a different one with document. This time we pass it the name of the collection and the name of the fragment, um, just like before. Now, how does it know which document uh, to show? Well, here when we um, when we load when we call this component, we pass it a document ID property. So this will get passed to the HOC, and the HOC will use that to query the collection. Apart from that, uh, we have the, the image, we have a sidebar. Um, we have another model, this time for the um, edit form, which is triggered by uh, just an icon. Uh, again, whenever you see components dot something, this means it's uh, one of the built in registered components in Vulkan. So in this case, it would be this model. It shows the Pix edit form, and then we also have comments list, comments, uh, comments new form, and and that's about it. So a few things to take a look at. First, Pix edit form. This is the form you just saw for editing a picture, this one. And so again, we're using a, a built-in component. This time, it's called Smart Form, and this will actually generate the form for us. So what it needs to do, to do that is a collection, picks. If we pass a document ID, it will understand that this is a form for editing a specific document, right? If we didn't pass this, this would be a new document form. But since we are passing it, it will look up the document with this ID in the collection picks and then let us edit it. We also pass a fragment for the mutation to return. In other words, once we submit this form, uh, we're going to get some data back from the server, right, with the, the new results. And so we can define the shape of that data with, again, a fragment, a GraphQL fragment. There's a show remove option, uh, whether or not we should show that uh, delete button. And finally, uh, what should happen on success? Uh, in this case, we want to close the model. And this is a property that comes uh, from the parent because we are inside a model window. Um, lastly, there's also the same form, but for creating a new picture. As you can see, this time there is no document ID. But other than that, it's pretty similar. Uh, one small detail to note here is that to know if we should display the form or not, we are, uh, are reusing our check function on the mutation. If you remember, when we defined our mutations, we also had these check functions. 
and they are useful not only to check you know on the server if the user can insert something in the database and so on but they can also be useful on the client um, to know whether we should show a form or not or in this case uh, let me find it we want to know if we should show that uh, little uh, pencil icon or not so we can also use the uh, mutations edit check function so that's it for the pix components um, let's go over comments real quick we also have a list component it's also wrapped with with list and with current users current user sorry we also have an item component um, and then an edit form so this time the collection is different it's not pix it's comments the fragment is different as well and uh, a new form uh, one important thing to note here is that one of the props is uh, pre-filled. So when we are inserting a new comment, like I said before, the, we want it to be for this specific picture, right? So we have this pick ID property in our schema, but we don't want to let users just have to type it in manually. We want it to be pre-filled with the ID for this picture. And that's what the pre-filled props property lets us do. Last directory common uh, for you know everything else. So we have a header. Um, in our header we have um, we actually have two um, two use cases, one for a logged in user and one one for a logged out user. If the user is logged in, we show them um, the this pop up with whether or not they are an admin and then sign out change password. And uh, if they are logged out, uh, we show them a different pop up with the accounts form. Uh, apart from that, we show the picks new form when users are logged in. So right here again in the model again using a modal trigger. Um, and then layout. So uh, a layout is the template that's going to be used to display every page in your app. In this case, we only have one page, uh, one route. So even though you know we have a detail view, it's not actually changing the route. So um, a layout isn't that useful. But you know, in, in a real world app, you could very well imagine having multiple routes, multiple pages, and wanting to reuse the same header and footer for all of them. So that's what you can do with a layout. A layout is just a component where um, the children prop here is replaced with you know, the current route, the current page, basically. Another thing to note here is we're using Helmet, which is a React package that lets you insert uh, meta tags in the head of your app. In this case, uh, we want to insert two link tags, one for um, loading Bootstrap, and then one for loading the font awesome icon library that we use to display the small comment icon and the pencil icon. And then to uh, enable that layout, um, we have to replace the standard layout that comes with Vulkan. Um, the standard layout um, being just one div with, you know, the children prop. So it basically does nothing um, except, you know, it lets you display like a, an error message. That's, that's about it. So we do want to replace that and we can do this by importing the layout and then calling replace component, uh, the name of the component layout and then our new layout that we define in our components. Um, one more thing, the default uh, comment icon is a bit different. So in this case, I'm just uh, redefining it to use the icon named comment from the font awesome set. Um, this is really optional, it's just uh, to be a bit nicer. So we've now checked out every file in the Instagram example. 
and hopefully this has helped you get a better idea of how all the pieces fit together in a typical Vulkan app. And of course, you know, a real world app would probably be a lot more complex and have more code and so on, but the, the basic building blocks will always be the same. You'll always be dealing with collections which have schemas, resolvers, mutations, and then on the client, components which get fed data by uh, higher order components. And so once you master these uh, basic building blocks, uh, you can really build pretty much anything you want. So let me know if you have any questions, uh, either here in the comments or in the um, Vulkan Slack chat room at slack.vulkanjs.org. And then hopefully um, you'll be able to get started and build more cool stuff with Vulkan.